Day by day, we discover more and more about the Biden crime family. And I think it's only a matter of time before we see him and his crime brothers and sisters in handcuffs. I'm serious. And I know, you know, for some, it may not seem like anything will happen. You know, it, it, it may seem like the rainstorm is always over us and it's never going away. But I think that's intentionally being pushed upon us, right? I can't remember if it was a short or a video. I think it was a YouTube short that I dropped where uh, it, it was being discussed that I think that's part of their agenda to make the right feel hopeless and helpless as if the end is near. But trust me when I tell you this, they're losing the culture war. They're losing. You see it all over the place. Look at Target. Look at Bud Light. Think of Sound of Freedom. Richmond down in Richmond. Richmond, north of Richmond, down in Richmond, <laughs> down in Richmond. That wouldn't make any sense because Richmond is south of uh, 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 Washington. But which is why that line is Richmond, north of Richmond, the Richmond and Washington. But anyway, you, you, you look at all of these different instances of things going on and you don't see them winning. And I think they're panicking. Part of their strategy to demoralize us, to make us feel as if we can't win. But I think we already got the W in the bag, and they know it. Like, share, comment, hit that subscribe button if you are new. If you would like to help me out even further with the YouTube algorithm, too, watch this video to the very end. Now, let's dive in. House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer is demanding that the National Archives turn over unredacted emails involving then-Vice President Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, Ukraine, and Burisma. The committees are asking for access to a case record called Email Messages to and or from Vice President Biden and Hunter Biden. They're also targeting specific emails where Biden used a pseudonym, a different name, Robert Peters, Robin Ware, and or J.R.B. Ware. All of these are alias names, pseudonyms that Joe Biden apparently was using when dealing with business deals with Hunter Biden, allegedly, and his foreign uh, partners. Joining me right now is John allegedly. Ratcliffe. He is the former director of national intelligence and a Texas congressman. John, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks very much for being with me. You bet. You bet. Always good I to see you, Maria. I want to first ask you about these <clears throat> alias names, these pseudonyms that Joe Biden was, was using. Why? <laughs> well, I think you have to start with, uh, you know, Joe Biden's big lie here, uh, which was from the beginning uh, repeatedly saying, look, I never talked about uh, uh, business in Ukraine and Burisma with, with Hunter Biden. And we've seen uh, evidence mounting uh, that says just the opposite. And, you know, you had whistleblower testimony to that effect. And then two weeks ago, Maria, you had actually um, testimony from Hunter Biden's own business partner uh, saying you know, that's simply not true. Joe Biden is lying. I was there for at least 20 phone calls, uh, some of those with Burisma executives uh, where, you know, Joe Biden did have uh, conversations about that. I think what's most significant about this, Maria, and why this is such a big deal is the person that is now saying Joe Biden was lying is Joe Biden. These are Joe Biden's own records. And as you just put, the, 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 these are the official National Archives vice presidential records. And the title of one of the email attachments that Jamie Comer is looking for says, you know, Vice President's uh, email, Vice President Biden's emails with Hunter Biden to and from Hunter Biden regarding, uh, you know, Burisma and the Ukraine. I mean, if that's not a smoking gun, it's a, it's a bloody knife. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's the kind of evidence that, uh, that Jamie Comer ought to be looking for, and that's why he wants it. And so, mm. um, you know, what makes it worse is these, what these official records reflect, Maria, is, you know, you know why, to your question, why uh, use an alias? Well, um, uh, a confidential human source that the FBI describes as um, highly credible, says there are 10 million reasons why Joe Biden would do that, why he would use, uh, uh, you know, an alias. You know, think about this, Maria. What, what that email says is that not Robert Peters, but Vice President Joe Biden in his official capacity as the vice president is going to have a phone call with the president of the Ukraine, and the only person that's copied on that is Hunter Biden, 
someone that doesn't work for the government, and then it just so happens that that phone call relates to a person that Joe Biden uh, brags about is uh, that that he uh, leveraged into firing. Uh, you know, the Ukrainian prosecutor into Burisma, which is the basis of what the confidential human source says the bribe was for in the first place. I mean, this uh, if this were a movie, you wouldn't believe it because it's just, uh, it's so incredible. Well, I think you make such an important point here, John, because Joe Biden has been saying now for years that he has no knowledge whatsoever of Hunter Biden's business deals, and yet there he is on an email with just Hunter Biden, and he's doing such an important phone call, and he's the point man for Ukraine. He's the point man uh, for China and for the foreign policy in the Obama. Allegedly, of course. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I, I have no idea. But you're on the phone? Hmm. And you know, it's not like it's the first time he's been caught lying before. Uh, he was caught lying some years ago uh, when he had said that he, like, graduated the top of his class and all of this other stuff. I Actually, I think I dropped a YouTube short on that a while back. But, like, the news called him out. Like, when the news actually did their job, when they actually truly fact-checked, called him out on it. And he had to come out and admit that he lied. And then, of course, you know, I, I dropped the YouTube short actually yesterday. Uh, if you haven't seen that, definitely go and check it out. But he was lying about Trump. He got up and said, have you ever seen him denounce white supremacy, the KKK and whatever, whatever the, you know, have you, ever, have you ever heard him say it? Have you ever heard him? And then, of course, you know, in the YouTube short, it clips to Trump saying, I denounce, uh, you know, the KKK, white supremacy and uh, 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 David Duke and all of this other stuff. And it's just like, come on, man. He's a blatant liar, an absolute liar, absolute liar. So I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm not surprised by this stuff. Administration. Um, and, and, and here you have all of these alias names. I mean, this is very suspicious. And yet the mainstream media will not report this. Uh, the lies have been going on since 2020 uh, when those 51 intelligence agents uh, signed their name to a letter suggesting that the Biden laptop was was Russian disinformation. You were the truth teller. And it's amazing to me that the whole media landscape went with all these 51 intelligence uh, uh, people saying that it was Russian disinformation when, in fact, you came on this program and you said it yourself that it was absolutely not uh, Russian disinformation. And what was most important was that you were a sitting DNI. Let's run that soundbite from October 2020 when I spoke with you three years ago. Watch. This is not part of some Russian disinformation campaign. The intelligence community has not been involved with Hunter Biden's laptop. Hunter Biden is a U.S. person, and he would be subject to any investigation regarding fraud or corruption would be uh, rightfully the jurisdiction of the FBI. So the FBI has had possession of this. So, so John, I mean, this came up again with the subpoenas to the DOJ and the FBI from Jim Jordan. It's amazing to me that the mainstream media went wild with the 51 agents. They did not, they completely ignored a sitting DNI. You were the sitting director of national intelligence saying the complete opposite, but your name was not mentioned. Right. Well, even even worse than that, Maria, not only was I the, the sitting DNI, the official spokesperson for the intelligence community of the United States saying exactly what uh, you just heard there. But the DOJ and the FBI backed me up at the time. Uh, so my conversations privately with both Attorney General Bill Barr and with yeah. FBI Director Christopher Wray was around the fact that, why, look, Hunter, or, th this whole Hunter Biden laptop thing, we all know that the laptop is real. We know that the FBI, you have it, and that Adam Schiff and Democrats are trying to politicize intelligence that doesn't exist for political purposes. We all need to come out and say this, and I did that. And so what's, why Jim Jordan is so exercised about this and what, what, uh, what Christopher Wray in particular is going to have to address is why was he having conversations with me acknowledging the truth and then agents for him at the FBI were secretly going out and saying just the opposite to uh, social media platforms like Twitter and, and, uh, and Facebook and saying, hey, uh, be on the lookout for Russian disinformation involving Hunter Biden. I mean, it, it's going to be hard to explain. We know why. Um, or, or to reconcile 
you know, those facts. And I think that's why Jim Comer is, is uh, I mean, why Jim Jordan is, is pressing this fact with these subpoenas. Yeah, but John, let's face it, they don't care. I mean, they are focused on Donald Trump. I mean, you just mentioned 10 million reasons, right? And we know that that remark that you just made refers to $10 million that the Bidens took in from Ukraine, according to House Oversight Committee members and James Comer, uh, that one of the Burisma guys said, the CEO of Burisma said, well, $5 million to one Biden, $5 million to another Biden. That's bribery. The charges here are bribery, and the mainstream media will not cover it. Instead, we're seeing the heat on former President Trump get hotter. The former president now must turn himself in by next Friday for an arraignment on 13 charges from the Georgia election investigation. His legal team is now requesting that the trial on January 6th should be held in April of 2026. Special counsel Jack Smith says he wants the trial to begin sooner rather than later. He wants a trial in January, January 2nd. So, John, how do you square this circle, the fact that you're hearing bribery charges against a sitting president, and yet the media and the, the Biden DOJ is zeroing in and ramping up the heat on former President Trump? Well, Maria, I don't think it's that they're ignoring it. I think it's that they're scared. Look, you have to, you have to keep in mind that they're all co-conspirators in this. They're all complicit in this. What mm. I mean by that is... All of this stuff wasn't, it, it, it was the fact that the mainstream media uh, went with all of the things like the Hunter Biden laptop as Russian disinformation. They promoted the 51 intelligence officials that were lying. They promoted the, you know, Russia collusion story. All of these things, uh, and, and, and folks at the Department of Justice and the FBI, you know, uh, you know they lied to get uh, FISA warrants uh, to spy on the Trump campaign. So they're all... You know, they were all part of this, and they're all complicit in this, and there's so much at stake. And if it unravels, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not just, uh, you know, political folks that will, will take a fall on this. It's, uh, you know, the American people will see for, you know, uh, see it for what it is. Now, so having said that, you know, yeah. Exactly what I've been saying. They're scared. Because if this all fails, they go down with it. They all go down. They know it. They're not stupid, of course. They're not stupid. That's why they're trying so hard. They know it. You know, um, now I'm not the most uh, scholarly individual when it comes to uh, law, but that sounds like a crime organization, you know? And, and as far as I'm concerned, isn't that like part of what uh, a RICO charges? You know, what they're trying to charge Uncle Trump with in Georgia? Maybe I have have it all wrong, but that, that that sounds like an organized crime organization, you know, and maybe that doesn't qualify as a RICO, but it sounds organized and, you know, like a crime organization to me, if I do say so myself. But what do y'all think? Let me know. Yeah, these these are the challenges that President Trump continues to face, um, you know, with these with these charges and the and the trial dates that are coming up. You know, the, the thing that I would you know point out to to, to, to people here is that you know, uh, uh, Donald Trump didn't uh, run for president to uh, run for re-election as president to, to avoid political charges, as some people are saying. You got to remember, he announced he was a candidate first. He became the front runner first. All of these charges in Georgia, in New York, both Jack Smith cases and the federal cases, they decided to bring charges after Donald Trump became the leading contender in the Republican nomination, which just really underscores why this all continues to be political and why it's all directed at trying um, to stop him from being reelected. Yeah, I don't think anybody could really answer the question of how this plays out. Trump is obviously far and away the, con the, the leading contender for the GOP nomination, but the problems legally are getting worse. Uh, he's already got four indictments, and now we understand that Arizona Attorney General Chris Mays has announced she's investigating the former president over the 2020 election as well. This happening just days after Governor Katie Hobbs told reporters that the state should press charges against Trump. So you may very well be hearing of a fifth indictment against Trump, and yet he keeps rising in the polls. H how does this play out from your legal perspective? 
uh, your prosecutor perspective, John, how long do these trials take? In other words, is it even feasible that he could be on trial before the presidential election? Would that be fair, given the time that it would take for, you know, the discovery process to, to, to take, uh, to play out? Well, uh, you know, uh, uh, absolutely not. I mean, so that's really underscored just by what, what's happened this week. Think about this is, is, you know, President Trump has asked, you know, for the trial date in the January 6th, which is currently set in January of 2024. Um, he's asked that it be moved to January uh, or April of 2026, which is reasonable. The problem, of course, is he has an unfriendly judge. But, but think about this, is the argument that that, that judge is going to have to take up is the fact that jury selection in that case is supposed to start on December 11th. Um, also on December 11th, however, is a pre-trial hearing in the other case that Jack Smith filed down in Florida on the Mar-a-Lago classified documents thing. So, so you, you have Jack Smith created this issue. He, 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 he you know, filed two different cases in two, two different jurisdictions, and now the dates are running into each other. Um, you know, and now you, as you point out, you, you compound the fact that you have this, you know, the New York case and the Georgia case. Look, this, this uh, Arizona uh, you know, the possibility of another case there. I'll just say it's a, from a legal perspective, it's an absolute joke. I mean, the, the premise of it is uh, what they what they're calling a fake elector scheme. Well, whether you like it or not, it's an Listen. alternate elector scheme. It's a legal theory. And if there wasn't amb any ambiguity, Congress, a democratically controlled Congress wouldn't have come in last year and modified the Electoral Count Act for the stated purpose of removing any ambiguities you know, from the powers that the vice president had. So, you know, people may not like it, but, but to, to take legal theories and try and turn them into, um, in, into criminal activities is just a joke across the board. And yes, I mean, you know, these cases like the RICO case in Georgia and these classified information cases involving the Classified Information Protection Act, these are cases that under the best circumstances um, take years to present. And yet you have prosecutors who who launched them after Donald Trump is in the middle of a presidential campaign and now want to, you know, get them to trial in three or four or five or six months, which is just, it's absurdly ridiculous. And why at the end of the day, you know, the Supreme Court will have to impose some sanity as these things go up. Yeah, all of this as we see evidence of uh, Biden family influence peddling with 20 shell companies set up and, and, and 176 suspicious activity reports from the banks on the Biden accounts. It's just stunning. John, it's always a pleasure to see you. I so appreciate The Biden crime family and um, his uh, crime partners, all right, running scared. We know. How, how does that lyric go? Um, oh man, they they. Uh, why why am I drawing a blank now? Goodness gracious! I was just listening to the song yesterday too. Um, the um, Richmond North of Richmond when he says something along the lines of, "They don't think you know." Uh, what is it that now? I'm second guessing if it's that song. They don't think you know, but I know that you do. Anyway. They don't think that we know, but we definitely do. They're afraid. They're absolutely afraid. And you, you see leftist media trying to paint the picture that Trump is afraid. And, you know, he's a scared little boy now. The elites are afraid. They're very afraid. Because they see how people have rallied behind Uncle Trump. And that's why they're just throwing everything at him. We got to take this guy down. Because if he doesn't go down... We all go down. We all go down. And it's also a shame that you don't see any other, um, you know, Republicans really standing up to this crap. Right. You see a lot of the other Republicans just laying down and, you know, getting the spanking. Right. You know, just get just getting the spanking. I don't know if y'all used to get whoopings when y'all were younger, but I know I sure did. OK. And it seems like they just laying down just. Just getting the whooping. And I'm like, yo, what are y'all doing? Y'all talk all this sweet stuff, all this good stuff. But then when it comes time to be about that action, y'all just. <laughs> well, we know next election. Y'all know what to do.
These Republicans who ain't stood up or said anything, who've just been hiding. Y'all know what to do. I don't even need to say it. Y'all let me know what you thought about this one in the comment section below. Like, share, comment. Hit that subscribe button before you go. Peace and love. I'm out.